Amen. If you would please turn with me in your Bibles to James chapter 4. James chapter 4. Now I believe I did tell my my missus that I was doing 10 and 11. I might get to 12, but it'll be okay. I'm just going to read verse 11 for you tonight. It says, Do not speak evil of one another, brethren. He who speaks evil of a brother and judges his brother speaks evil of the law and judges the law. But if you judge the law, you are not a doer of the law, but a judge. Let's pray. Dear Lord, most gracious Heavenly Father, as we come before you here right now, Father, I ask that you would examine our hearts. Father, help us to see you for who you are tonight. Lord, as we look at what your brother preached and pinned down, I ask that we would be able to take this and apply this to our lives tonight. And Father, let us see the glory in your holy scripture. For it's your name we ask and humbly pray. Amen. Now as we look here, we find him saying, Do not speak evil uh, of one another, brethren. Now, as we look at that, we, we need to understand what's going on. We need to understand what's, what's happening. Well, uh, from what he's saying inside the church, inside the the church at Jerusalem, apparently you had a lot of arguing going on. You had a lot of people uh, backbiting. You had a lot of people speaking evil of one another. That word evil there uh, means the same as the word speak, and it's the exact same word used twice, and that word means to slander. So apparently Jerusalem church... I uh, had a problem with people slandering one another. You know, I think 2,000 years later, how many churches does that still happen in? You see, a lot of times what we do is we, we think that, uh, that church uh, has gotten either A, worser and worser, or gotten better and better, when the fact of the matter is, if we are doing what the Lord has called us to do, we're going to have the same problems from time to time. I bet you if we ask uh, some of our uh, more senior uh, adults in this room that they can tell you they've seen things come and go and then come back around again. Would that be the truth? We see we, we have these same fights that come up from time to time, the same the same dilemmas that come up from time to time. So we need to understand that in this process, in looking at James, James just going right at the very fact of matter, do not judge or do not speak evil of one another, brethren. You, you see, when he uses the word brethren, he's not saying that he, they're talking about people outside the church. They're talking about people within the church. But he goes on to here and he says with that, uh, he who speaks evil of a brother and judges his brother. Now I want to look at this word speak there. Like we said, it does mean to slander. In other words, uh, that you say things that are not true. Now I know that all of our mamas or maybe our daddies all told us, if you ain't got nothing good to say, then... Don't say nothing at all, right? But as you look at that, how many times should that be what we do? Instead of using our words to slander another brother. It also means to criminate. Now as we look at this, Discriminate, it means to accuse somebody of something without merit. In other words, if uh, they came in and they're wearing uh, uh, something that you wouldn't wear, you don't get to judge them for it. You don't get to, well, do you see what they're wearing? Uh, uh, they ought to know better. Well, guess what? Maybe they don't know better. 
Or maybe they're at a different level or stage in their Christianity than you are. So therefore, we should not slander or try to accuse them of something when it's not true. It also means to simply just lie about. Now, I know that that's never happened in any churches. We, uh, we know that uh, everything that's said about a church, everything that's said about somebody within the church is 100% true. And, and because of that, we, we are all one big hunky-dory family. All, I think there's uh, 44, 45, 46 churches in the Bowen Association. We're all perfect and nothing ever goes wrong. I mean, everybody ought to know that one, right? But how many times is it that Somebody might have a little bit of envy. Somebody might have a little bit of strife. Somebody might have a little bit of a bad day when they woke up and all they want to do is tell everybody about it. Well, let me tell you right here. The Bible says that we are not to speak evil of the law. Now, this word evil also means uh, to be unholy. So if you put these together, we're not to slander somebody with an unholy accusation. We are not to degenerate to a lower level. You see, if you are a child of God, then we are to be a child of God. How do you know the difference in somebody that is a child of God and how somebody acts as a child of God? Well, there's a lot of different ways you could look at it. I mean, look at what Jesus said about it, James's own uh, big brother, when he said uh, that you will know them by their fruit. So what does that mean? That doesn't mean we judge their fruit. It means that we can inspect their fruit. Now, there are going to be some times in some people's lives where they are going through a rough patch and that fruit may not be as evident. But then again, there might be a time in their life where that fruit is so evident that anybody and everybody would know. But you know, some fruit may not even be right fruit. How do you know that? Uh, because Jesus would say, uh, I believe it's in the Sermon on the Mount that uh, that a basically a grape can't be produced from an apple tree. An orange cannot be produced from a watermelon vine. Now I think all of us should know that we all at some point have been part of some sort of. Uh, farming of some sort. We all know those things. And how do you know that? Well, you can look at it when you go through the juice aisle in uh, uh, the Piggly Wiggly or in the Walmart or in the Publix or wherever else. But we are not, we are not to degenerate and be like the heathen. We are not to act like Gentiles. We are not to act like the lost and the reprobate. Why? Why Why can't we do that, preacher? Because the Word of God says here that we are not to do that. Another one of these litmus tests where whether you know somebody is of or is not of uh, the, the assembly of God is simply by this. Uh, if you'll remember uh, something that we had read uh, at this point years ago uh, over in John, John uh, chapter... 1 John chapter 2, we were talking about this earlier today, me and the, some of the other preachers in the area. There it says that they went out from us, but, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would have continued with us. But they went out and they might be made manifest that none of them uh, were of us. What is he saying there? He's saying there, instead of speaking evil about them, instead of degenerating against them, instead of being immoral against them, let them show their fruits. But he says it's of the law. I mean, you look at that again. Uh, verse 11. Speak not evil of one another, brethren. He who speaks evil of a brother judges his brother and speaks evil of the law. So the word law there, that, that word is a very hard word to say. It's uh, nomos, N-O-M-O-S, very hard, I told you. 
Uh, but it means uh, three, three basic things. It means uh, regulations. You see, there are some regulations that we got to go by uh, when it comes to the Word of God. And the best way I can tell you is, if you study to show yourself approved, and you can't find that God says you can do it, or you find that God says that you're not supposed to do it, then you're supposed to do what the Word of God says. Because this Bible, uh, while it may have been written by 40 different, author, uh, 40 different writers, uh, is all written by one author who is the Holy Spirit of God. And in that, there are regulations that we are supposed to go by. The, this word law not only means regulations, it means the biblical principles in which we should uh, also uh, go by with our lives. You see, there are certain biblical principles in this book, such as... We're not to blaspheme the Holy Spirit. Uh, there's another one there that, that might be good. We are to believe in the Lord God Almighty. Uh, there are others in there, and uh, you can look all throughout your Bible, and you can find the very principles of God, that God is saying, this is what is best for you, and if it's not best for you, then don't do it. But this word law, this pneumos, uh, the, the, the best one that I found is, it, it's another word for gospel. So what, what do we find there that he's saying? He is saying there, thereby, uh, he's saying um, that we are uh, not to speak evil of the gospel. See, this is, this is a place where we have so many problems when it comes to uh, people within the church. How, how do you know that, preacher? I know that because of this. How many times have you heard it said over the years that nothing can help them? They are helpless. They are lost. There's nothing. There, there's no way they can get saved. There's no way that they can get right. There's no way that, that they can do anything. And the answer truly is they can't in themselves. But through the gospel of Jesus Christ, all things are possible. But, but what am I supposed to do with that, preacher? What, what am I supposed to... What, how is that supposed to happen? It's supposed to happen to the very fact of the matter is that we don't slander a brother, but that we stick true to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Rudimentary, we know that the gospel literally is that Jesus, and we just celebrated Resurrection Sunday, Jesus died on the cross, was put in a tomb, and three days later, the stone was rolled away, and guess what? He wasn't there. He had arisen. And because of that gospel, that is something that can change all of us, because as we find Paul telling us in Romans, he's saying that we are to die, and as we die to self, we become alive in Christ. And as we die to self, and we become alive to Christ, then we can live out this law that we can't do on our own. Look a little bit further. They says not only should we not speak, uh, not speak evil of a brother, and, and uh, but also he says there and that we are not to judge, uh, that we are not judges of the law. So, so what does that mean? We are not to judge the law. We are not to decide what is good and what is wrong or what is bad on our own merit. You ever done that? Where you, when you first, as soon as you see somebody, you automatically judge them and you, you've already got an idea who they are. You already know what you're going to do. You already know how you're going to act. You already know uh, that they're not even worth it. James says we're not to do that. You see, I have seen the biggest drunks in a town get saved and become great men and women of God. I have seen drug addicts let loose, be let loose from those drugs and grab a hold of God and be changed forevermore. I have seen those who have 
who have been just the absolute worst reprobate you could ever think of get right with God. There's a story that, uh, that oh, uh, Billy Graham once told. Now, if Billy said it, I, I guarantee it's true. Billy said he was, uh, there was this, um, this revival going on. And a young man came in, he was in shorts and a, a dirty t-shirt, and it's in the midst of a big church activity. Everybody was in their best. This is back in the, uh, back in the 30s, I believe he said, maybe the 40s. And everybody's in their, their Sunday afternoon best, and this guy comes in, and they didn't shun him. They didn't look at him and say, well, you can't come in here because you're not dressed right. No, they brought him in. They showed him a seat. He had a seat. He, he uh, listened to the, the songs, beautiful songs. He listened to the preaching. And that preaching, as it went further and further, that, that young man got convicted. It came time for an altar call. He, he stepped out. He went forward, gave his heart and life to Christ, got up and looked around and seen other men of the church there praying with him. Now, you may ask, why, is that, why does that matter? As the story was that I heard it, that was Billy Graham. So we never know. We never know by looking on the outside what God can do on the inside. We cannot judge the gospel. If it were you... And you got to choose who got the gospel and who didn't. That would put you in this place of God. That's not our place to judge. It's his seat. He gets to sit there. All we get to do is serve. We're not to judge the law. That means that we don't get to decide who gets the gospel and who doesn't. Why, why do I know that? Because the word of God says, if you've ever read Matthew 28, that it's to go out to every creature. What does that mean? That means if you're a preacher and you ain't got nobody to preach to, even go preach to the cows. But we are to give it out to everyone. You know how you know that you will fail at evangelism when you don't tell anybody at all. Who are we to judge? How do we do that? Well, we do that, number one, by our actions. I mean, uh, when we meet somebody, what is our reaction? What is our action? Are we being intentional to, to keep away from that judgmental ability and give them love and grace and mercy and tell them about Christ? Are we living in a proper humility before our Lord? You know who are a lot of times the worst at being uh, proper and humble? Ever try to get around a bunch of preachers and hear them tell, tell a story, oh, I got an even better one than that. And the next one, oh, I got an even better one than that. I've heard it all, and I've learned to keep my mouth shut. Why? Because when you ain't got nothing good to say, you don't say nothing at all. But in that, our actions show who we are. If we are an oh, poor, pitiful me, type of attitude, then that's who we are. What do we do with that? Well, what we do with that is we have to give it to Christ. But as we look there in not judging the law, we've looked at our actions. We are to be humble. We are to tell others of Christ. We are to be a child of God. 
But what are we not supposed to do? Well, we are not to do what it says there in verse 17. If you'll look there in your Bible, verse 17, Therefore to him who know to do good and do, does it not, to him it is sin. What does that mean? If we do not do what the Word of God has told us to do, we are just as much guilty of that sin. So when we don't tell somebody about Christ, we are guilty of breaking the Great Commission. When we are not humble before Christ, we are guilty of that fact as well. When we are not faithful to Him in all matters, we are guilty of that inaction. We're saying, basically, that we know better than God. I know what's better, and I'm going to do what I know is better than what God has told me to do. All that does is bring you to calamity and destruction. Look at the rest of this verse, if you would, with me. It says there, it speaks evil of the law and judges the law. But if you judge the law, you are not a doer of the law but a judge. What is he saying there? He's saying there that we are uh, not being a doer of the law, then we are doing the judging ourselves. Now, if you look at that word doing there, th that word means that we are to perform the law. We've already established that law means gospel, so we are performing the gospel. We are putting legs on the Word of God, whether it's in our actions, whether it's in our words, whether it's in our being, that we are always simply looking to perform the love, the grace, the mercy, the testimony of our Lord Jesus Christ. Because we are to be a doer. It means that we obey the gospel. If you'll remember in your Bible, there, there's this lawyer that comes to Jesus, and he asks a simple question. He says, what is the greatest commandment? Now, we've all heard it, and quite honestly, the Lord, his favorite book of the Bible was Deuteronomy. How do you know that? Because he quotes it a lot. Here he quotes Deuteronomy chapter 6. That you were to love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, your mind, and your strength. What does it look like when you really love God that way? What's it look like when you love the Lord with every inch of your fiber? Are you going to serve Him? Or are you going to sit on a pew and be like a knot on a log? Are you going to do what he's called you to do? Or are you going to hide from that responsibility? Are you going to be faithful in every single little thing? Or are you going to do what you think is right? If you look in your Bible, the book of Judges, you'll find it, it's prevalent throughout the book of Judges. I believe it says it three, maybe four times in there that everybody did what was right in their own eyes because they had no king. See, the difference in them and you is we have a king. So did they. Their king was Yahweh. Your king is Yahweh. Your king is the one that saves. Your king is the one that delivers. Your king is the one that provides. And for that, we should serve him. If you remember what James said. Now, James, James could have said to the church, to the 12 tribes that were abroad, he could have said, my big brother was Jesus. I listened to him. I know what he said, and this is what he meant. He could have said that, but he doesn't. What does he say? He says, James, a bondservant. That word is doulos. That means a slave of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ. That is our action. 
We are not to simply not be a doer because our name's already found in the Lamb's Book of Life. We are to be a doer because our name is found in the Lamb's Book of Life. But that also means to abide. To abide in the law. To abide in the gospel. I remember some doctor who was on some some big board of theologians before he got kicked off his horse and blinded would later go on to say, by grace are you saved. Not by works, lest any man can boast. And in that statement we find... Brother Paul saying, if we're going to abide in the gospel, it's through the very grace of our King. You find Jesus would say, the, the, literally the last sermon that he would give as he, he's getting ready to be uh, arrested, and right before that he he gives a little bit more to the 11 as he says there. Uh, he says, if you will be in me, if you will abide in me, I will abide in you. And together we can bear much fruit or over an abundance of fruit. Then that next apostle who was born out of due time would go on to say that if we are in him, there is no condemnation for our sin. If we are abiding in Him, if we are abiding in the gospel of Jesus Christ, we don't have to worry about who we used to be. We don't have to glorify who we used to be. We don't have to, we don't have to have, live in regret for who we used to be. Why? Because we're a new creature in Christ as we abide in the gospel of Jesus Christ. Let's look at this verse again. I'll look it over here. Do not speak evil of one another. In other words, do not slander one another. Do not judge one another. But do the law. Do the gospel. Here tonight, I'm going to simply ask you a few questions and we'll be done. Number one, how are you doing? How are you doing when it comes to the gospel? Are you living it? Are you doing it? Or is something lacking? Preacher, tonight I realize that, I, that I'm being overly judgmental and not showing grace, not showing mercy. It's great. Revelation 8.3 says to go before the altar of God. Preacher, I realize that I've been slack in my well-doing. Awesome. Go before the altar of God. Preacher, I'm not living the way I should be living. Okay. Go before the altar of God. Father, I'm too judgmental. Father, I, I, I don't have the love in my heart that I should have. These are prayers that we can pray. Because the Word of God says that if we will confess he is just and faithful to forgive and to cleanse us of all that unrighteousness. This being one of the very first books of your New Testament written, probably written around 44 or 45 B or A.D. In other words, these words are about 2,000 years old. The last ones I'll quote are from around 100 A.D. 50 years later, 50 years later, and we find it's the same gospel. 
here tonight as we get ready to pray. I'm going to simply ask you to pray. Go to him with whatever it is. And let him give you what you need. Let us pray. Dear Lord, most gracious Heavenly Father, as we come before you tonight, Father, we've heard your words. Father, we've, we've been faithful to what you have given us to give to your people. Father, in those places that you have convicted us tonight, Lord, I ask, as our eyes and our hearts are bowed before your throne, that you would give us the strength and the unction to cry out to you. Father, you know those places where we are just simply not doing your gospel. We've put our pl self in your place, and we, we've decided who, who and what will be done. Father, tonight, forgive. Cleanse. And give us a desire. Give us a desire not to slander. Give us a desire not to be inadequate. Give us a desire to be a true servant and slave of you. Lord, as your servant David said, purge us. Purge us tonight. And help us to live in your glory, in your majesty, and be within you as we abide. For it's your name we ask and humbly pray. Amen.